First thing you need to do is just state your full name, spell it, and give me a clap in front of your face. Okay. Walter Stanley Waltos. That last name is W-O-L-T-O-S-Z. The professional career of Walt Waltos has touched lives and impacted the world. His parents instilled in him a strong work ethic at a very young age. I was born in Harrison. Uh, we actually, uh, my grandparents lived in a little town called St. Joe, Arkansas, population 187. I think the sign hasn't changed in 70 years. A week before I was born, my mother went into false labor and they drove up to Harrison to the hospital and they drove back to find a pile of ashes where the house used to be. Everything they owned had burned to the ground while they were gone, so all they had was what was in the car. Uh, a week later, of course, uh, I was born. If mom was a hard worker, dad was a workaholic, almost, and uh, I have to admit I've been called that and, <laughs> and felt like I was that many times. Dad had gotten out of the Navy right after World War II, this was 1945, and uh, he built a new house. They had no running water, no electricity. It was an Arkansas hillbilly shack. After about one year of being a farmer, which is what my dad's uh, occupation says on my birth certificate, uh, he took his crop to market, got $18, and decided he wasn't a farmer. <laughs> he had been a radio man in the Navy, and he'd been in ham radio when he was uh, a kid, growing up in Massachusetts. So he went into electronics. Uh, never got a college education, but ended up being uh, promoted to engineer uh, after a number of years, and ended up with about four patents uh, to his name. Walt joined the Air Force and found he had a passion for flight. So he came to Auburn and earned a bachelor's degree and eventually a master's degree in aerospace engineering. Once he graduated, he found there were no jobs in the aerospace engineering field. So he decided to try a different field of engineering, which would eventually lead to him impacting lives throughout the world. I ended up working as an electrical engineer. <laughs> <laughs> for the FAA. When I was active duty Air Force, I was in electronics in uh, guidance and flight control. And of course, I'd been in electronics and ham radio, thanks to my dad. And then finally, as I say, aerospace opened up, went to Huntsville, stayed up there from 1971 to uh, 76. Um, ended up working for Thiokol there, Rocket Motor Company. And they sent me out to California to uh, Edwards Air Force Base, the Air Force Rocket Propulsion Lab on a business trip, and while I was there, they offered me a job. They, they liked the uh, computer simulation work I was doing and said, you know, we have an opening here. And so I uh, ended up going out to California in 76. It was with this move to California that he would meet the love of his life, Ginger. The two would embark on a new career that was born out of necessity. Well, you know, um, the only reason we did that was because Ginger's mom had ALS. And so it was a family need the, in 1981 um, that forced us to start thinking about how could someone who can't speak but still can think, how can they communicate? We thought there's gotta be a way uh, because she needed to communicate. And you know, the technology kept growing. After a couple of years of doing that on the side, we thought, we can make a go of this. And, uh, and it was a tremendous leap of faith because we had about enough money in the bank to, get, to go about six weeks if we didn't get orders. But orders were starting to come in at a fairly steady pace and I was still doing that on the side of my aerospace job, which was about a 60 hour a week job. So as I said, dad was a workaholic and I guess I inherited the genes. The orders started rolling in and the hard work started paying off. And for a young physicist in England, Walt software would have a life-altering effect. I communicate with a computer system in a box in the back of my wheelchair. A cursor moves across the upper part of the screen. I can stop it by pressing a switch in my hand. In this way, I can select words which are printed on the lower part of the screen. When I have built up a sentence, I can send it to a speech synthesis. I can write equations in words. I can also give lectures. I can then send it to the speech synthesizer, a sentence at a time. 
that works quite well, and I can try out the lecture and polish it before I give it. For Stephen Hawking, this meant that his study in the world of physics could continue. Walt went on to create software and programs to help people in need. He continues to support Auburn University through engineering fellowships and his support for the Formula SAE and Baja race teams in the engineering department. Well, I've always liked hands-on projects, and uh, when I've seen what the Formula team does and has done over the years, uh, it amazes me. The Formula team and the Baja team, as I've seen, learn teamwork, they learn the technology, they learn how to integrate various engineering disciplines, you know, they've got to have brakes, they've got to have the drivetrain, they've got to have the exhaust, the, the motor itself, the frame, the uh, monocoque the data acquisition system, learn how to go out and test drive. What do you learn out of a test drive? How do you take that and, and make improvements to the car? There's just so much that you learn from a project like this that you can't get out of a book. I think Peter Jones has done a great job mentoring the team over the years, and uh, again, the students just amaze me with what they're able to do now as an undergraduate student compared to what we could do back when I was in school. You know, my passion is flying, you mentioned that earlier, and uh, the ability to have the, the business jet that we fly and to be able to go back and forth between California and Auburn uh, pretty well whenever we need to, which is a couple times a month mostly. Um, the helicopter rating, yeah, uh, you know, something I always wanted to do, a great ambition, and luckily I had a friend who said use my helicopter, and, and by the way, uh, Here's my instructor, he's got 8,000 hours in helicopters and he's a great instructor. So I've been very fortunate to have you know, wonderful friends and, and uh, business associates. We've got a wonderful team on our, in our company that I get to work with. Uh, a bunch of young PhDs in sciences that I never took that are patient with me when I start asking questions. <laughs> and so uh, it's been very satisfying to learn um, and basically change careers about every 15 years and learn something new and uh, apply the basic skills that I learned at Auburn to different areas. And now I'm coming back full circle and getting back into aerospace again. Uh, so uh, we'll see, maybe I'll be back doing something with rocket motors again here soon. 